Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we're going to talk about converting a macro to VBA code. The reason for doing that is simply that a lot of times a macro is easier to build, easier to make, and a lot of times it's it's easier to manipulate a macro around and get it get the functions in the right order, you know, get the queries running in the right order, get the forms opening in the right order, and, and play with the various tools. A lot of times it's just easier in the macro editor to do that, but eventually as your program matures, a lot of times you'll want to convert that macro to VBA code so that all of it runs faster and more efficient. And in VBA, you can add an error handler routine to the program as well. So there's obvious benefits using VBA, but a lot of times a stepping stone to that can be using a macro too. So let's open up an access database right now. And in this access database, I have a, a macro here that I'll put in edit mode and explain kind of what's going on here. And really, it's, it's a simple backup macro. It's backing up a couple critical tables in this database. And the first thing I'll do is want to set warnings to off. I don't want the, the user to have to respond to whether they want to delete, whether they want to add, or what, how many records to add, you know, like the typical add and uh, delete queries do. And I also don't want to give a whole lot of information to the screen as it's happening. So I have the set warnings and I turn the echo off so that the screen doesn't actually display anything. For this particular macro, until the data gets very large, it really runs too quickly for echo to even be a worry at this point. But you know, for completeness, I go ahead and put that in here. And then I turn the echo back on and I turn the set warnings back on and then I display turn the hourglass off where I the first line here was turning the hourglass on and then coming down here I turn that hourglass off now you can see here's two delete queries you know deleting the data in the two backups and then appending from the regular file to the backup tables where the backup will reside from that point on and you'll see as I run this that it'll run very quickly and here we're already down to our message box where it says that they've been archived. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here and be done with it. So that's our macro. Now, converting this to VBA code when I'm ready to do that is simply a button up here. Convert macros to Visual Basic. And I'll click on that. It'll bring up a dialog box that asks me, do I want an error handler function in here? And I'll say, yes, I want an error handler function. And include the macro comments? Yes, let's go ahead and include the comments so that I know where this section of VBA code came from. And so when I click on convert, um, conversion is finished. It put it over in my other monitor, which is my main monitor. And here it has this converted macro. So if I double click on this converted macro, here we see that the comment that it put up here was that it was converted from the macro backup context and products. And here you see, you know, the regular commands, the do command for the hourglass, set warnings, the echoes, the open queries, all the things that you would expect when you, uh, when you look at a macro versus looking at the VBA code, even down to the message at the end. The nice thing about it, though, is that it, it has the exit function here, of course, but it has an error function here. So if there is an error, it goes down to an error handler section that we have here that right now really it's only going to show the error message, the error number. It's not very robust at this point, but at least it's there to show you that maybe the, the table didn't exist or or that couldn't delete the records because it had a form open that was pointing to the to the data or whatever error might uh, come about, you could make that a lot more robust with more messaging and and more trapping of different types of errors so you could give a good clean message to the user. But for now, it's mostly just a, a spot that you can go ahead and embellish. And so really, that's all there is to it. One button gets it converted. You can then decide to go back to that macro and, and, de and actually decide to to remove it so that you don't reconvert it again and then do all your editing here in the VBA code or whatever procedure you would do next in your deployment of your database. 
Thanks for coming. I appreciate you joining. Hope you enjoyed it. And hope to see you later. Thanks.